the subject then a little okay, bit. Okay, well, more. touching on the subject, um, let's see. Basically, I, I don't think people should be afraid of diversity, and I, but at the same time, I, I'm not. I wouldn't say I'm. Oh gosh, I'm sorry. I'm. <laughs> I, it's not a simple position, really, because I don't think it's a matter of being pro this or anti that. It's more of a matter of what things result in proper ethical treatment of people that already exist. And also, I'm I'm so, I'm so sorry. I'm I'm really not. Hey, that's fine. Don't worry. No problem. Okay, okay. But basically, what it's it's so hard to say anything because the problem with this kind of subject is that. You say one thing and people automatically start filling in the blanks and assume uh, that you must also be a member of some position that has all this fleshed out stuff that I don't actually think. Like for okay. instance, I'm not, I, I'm definitely, I'm not pro-eugenics. I'm very kind of anti-eugenics in the sense that I don't think that the state should be telling people you must design your babies a certain way or you must, or the, you know, these people must be uh, sterilized for their own good. But the other thing is I also don't want to even have kids of my own. so. All the stuff about babies, babies, babies kind of goes in my head a lot of the time. Oh, okay. Because, you know, I'm not even having any. So it's kind of like, well, I address it because the thing, the, the main, the, the direction I came in from that, on that subject is because being somewhat of an atypical person myself, I started reading things about people trying to prevent people like me from being born, and that sort of bothered me. I mean, I don't, I mean, I don't think anybody should be forced to have kids, obviously, but I don't like the thought of, say, my existence being considered an abuse. Right. Due uh, to being, because uh, I, I don't know, this is, this is something I've written about. I have, I'm on the autistic spectrum. Oh, okay. My diagnosis would be Asperger's, so. Right. I, and I've heard things about, like, everybody trying to find a cure, you know, regardless of what we think, and people trying to, I mean, it's, I'm, I'm all for people, okay, this is a basic thing. I'm, what I believe in is morphological freedom and cognitive liberty, which basically means that people should, to the greatest extent possible, be able to control their own configurations and destinies. And for people that already exist, which is the main people I'm concerned with, you know, babies not babies are totally not even in this thing. Yeah, yeah. People that already exist should not be forced to change themselves in ways that, you know, based on stereotypes and assumptions about things. Like, I've, I mean, I've had people tell me things like, well, how would you, well, you don't know any better. You, you think you're happy the way you are because you don't know what it's like to be normal. And I just think that's really rude and patronizing. So, right. I oh, I totally understand your position there. And really, I, I, that's the one thing that amazes me is the people who make that argument that you know there should be people should be changed or you know they're they're not normal. And and the fact is that there's no. How do you define what's normal in my mind? Anyway, you know, each one of us has some unique mental or physical characteristics, right, that make us different from uh, other people of the world. Uh, so yeah. yeah, and I think the, the problem, I think, I think what happens there is, you know, for basically for any, for any given, say, condition that does not kill you, um, you're going to find people with that, you know, condition or configuration, and some of them are okay with it, some of them would rather change it, and both people's opinions are legitimate. I mean, like, there are people in the world who are, who are deaf. And some of them are totally fine with being deaf. They don't, you know, they don't want to get operations or implants or anything. They right. just want to use sign language. And then there are other people that do want to get implants. And I think both people need to be respected. Yeah. Basically, I don't think it's fair to say you you people who refuse to get treated are just being a burden on society or something. And I was like, dude, there's there's <laughs> plenty of people who can hear that are doing a lot less with their lives. So, you know, it's one of the, it's, 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 it's like certain things get singled out as being path, pathological. And I think it's kind of odd, though. And one thing I think is kind of funny, it's like, oh, all, you know, all these people who are different in some way and okay with it, they're the ones who are crazy and they need to be treated, and yet it's okay to just let people die of old age because that's normal. Right. So that's an interesting thing that I've found out, or that I've noticed, is that, you know, things that actually are deadly, I think, should be the attention of medicine. Exactly. There, That is a good point you make there. That, I mean, there are many things in aging that... Uh, uh, the, that are deadly, obviously, many problems that occur. Yeah, and, like you know, cancer, heart disease, you know, organ failure, all kinds of things that you know nobody wants. I mean, exactly. So and it's not exactly. And, yeah, uh, I just draw a huge distinction between something that's fatal and something that isn't. I think that things that are non-fatal should be much more in the realm of choice. Sure. I mean, things that are fatal, I guess, in a sense, there's some choice there. But I mean, I think that you know, when it comes to, you know, I I think that you know, if a kid has cancer, the parents should treat the cancer and. They should be liable if they don't, you know. Because it's a deadly, it's a deadly condition. Yeah, right. exactly. You know, I think all kids should get vaccinated, 
center because otherwise you're going to get like a measles farm popping up as they, they actually had in some areas because people were vaccinating. It's pretty scary stuff. Sure, sure. So, uh, yeah, going off on tangent now, but yeah, sorry, sorry for going off like that. No, there's just so many it is a very... It is a very good point that you bring up, Anne. I mean, uh, about uh, trying to make that distinction, and then also about morphological and uh, you know intellectual freedom, uh, cognitive liberty. Uh, now, yeah. I guess the one place, uh, seeing is that we had a viewer that uh, tuned in here, uh, Shannon Viff. She says hi to you. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, you, hi, hi, Shannon. Yeah. I've talked to her online a few times. Oh sure, yeah. And Shannon uh, brings up the point about being a parent and saying she would select for genes that would make her children more intelligent because she doesn't see it as any different than uh, giving your kids a proper diet so that they will be healthy and smarter, you know, such as... Well, I, well, I mean, it depends on what you mean by smart, though. I'm not just... And everybody jumps to the conclusion when I say that, that, oh, you're just being politically correct and pandering, but that's totally not true. I just don't really... When you think of talking about intelligence, it's I don't think it's it's yet been determined what parts of the brain, I mean, there's some, to some extent, I mean, you can, I mean, you should avoid, you know, drinking water tainted with lead when you're pregnant and things like that, and probably you don't want to play tackle football, but I mean, to right. the point of intelligence enhancing genes, I just don't think there's enough information to know what that would do or what, what that even means to say enhanced intelligence at this point. Right, yeah, Shannon says uh, eating while pregnant, uh, if you eat, make the right choices, yeah. and that, sure. thick, uh, you know, and, and being healthy while you're pregnant and eating the right things, and that uh, thicker neurons usually correlate with higher test scores, things like that. Uh, okay, well, I think, I think that as long as parents have the information, most of them will just choose to do that on their own. I just don't, I don't think there's any coercion necessary. No or, coercion, really. right. Now, the, the, uh, one interesting ethical point that comes in here, though, is parents with minor children. Let, now, you talked about being deaf and that a deaf person uh, should be able yeah. to make a choice. If they, if they are perfectly fine and, and, they, and, they, and they feel like their life is, is just like they want it and they don't need any kind of uh, cochlear implant or anything like that, well, that's great. Uh, what about children? Say you're a parent and you have uh, young children, uh, a child, three, four, five years old, discover that they're deaf. Uh, you know, now there you have a decision that seems a little bit more, you know, maybe the kid th thinks life is just grand, but uh, do the parents have any uh, say? I don't, see, what I, what, I, what, I, what I don't like is when people say, okay, some, somebody has an, a moral obligation to do X, Y surgery in that case. I don't think, I don't think it makes sense to say demonize people for not, not, doing something about something that isn't fatal. That as long it's, as it's, it's not it's, fatal is what you're saying. Well, right. it's it's more complicated than that though. Well, I mean, sure. if anybody really, I mean, I have long things on my blog. I'm I'm just kind of concerned now that now I'm saying this stuff. I'm gonna get all these messages saying, "Why are you saying?" And blah. Oh, oh, actually, speaking of that though, um, sorry, I'm getting tangential That's again. That's fine. But Go right it's, ahead. It's just it's not, I don't I don't look. It's not so much that I think people should not have access to treatments and things. I just think you have to realize that it's not like Legos. It's not, you know, once you have a person who already exists, it's not like a plug-and-play thing. It's not like even a cochlear implant right now is basically, it's basically very invasive surgery where you're drilling holes in people's heads and you can, you know, give them increased susceptibility to meningitis and things like that. It's not without risk. So I sure. think that it would be reasonable given the fact that there's, you know, if the kid stays deaf, they won't, they won't, they're not going to die of that. I think that it's reasonable for a parent to say, I don't want them drilling holes in my kid's head at this age. I'll wait until they get older and then they can try right. to choose for themselves. Yeah, that's, and I that's think that's, that's very seems like a reasonable position to me. Very reasonable to me as well. That's uh, basically where, the, where I fall on the spectrum. Uh, we have a, a question from one of the viewers here as well. Uh, what organization are you with mainly now? I, I mean, uh, if you oh, affiliate okay. yourself with any organization uh, at okay, the current the main time. The main organization I affiliate with right now is the Methuselah Foundation, which many of you are probably familiar with. Yes. I think, actually, I'm glad they brought that up because I kind of would rather, I would, you know, about the genetic stuff and the diversity, I, I would really rather just refer people to my blog for that because anything I say here is going to be way too simplistic and okay. it's going to cause kinds of chaos. I'm going to show so the graphic again. I'm going to show the graphic. Existence is wonderful. Go to the blog and you can get a lot more in-depth, detailed uh, information on all the genetic testing. Okay, back to your affiliations. Okay, my affiliations. Yeah, the Methuselah Foundation, I've been volunteering with them for a number of years now, actually. Probably maybe, maybe three or four, but there's always just been little different things that I've been doing, and the thing, you know, the, yeah, the Methuselah Foundation, most of you are familiar with it, it was the, uh, 